Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop and this Workshop Notes video number 23. Now, there's a couple of things which I missed out in the last Workshop Notes video because I didn't want it to be too long. I'm picking them up this time. Uh, one is talking about face side and face edge on preparing uh, wood. And I've been asked about what I call path hats. And you may have seen me using things like this uh, on an MFT3 top uh, in order to help push uh, wood against if you're doing a particular operation or to trap a uh, piece of wood between two of these in order to use a domino or whatever. I've been asked about that uh, and I'll be covering uh, a, a larger version which takes more than one domino in one piece of wood. And I also want to show you uh, these things which are really easy to make. Now when I was making uh, this uh, look-alike MFT3 table of my own uh, I put some bracing pieces in the corner here and I wanted to be able to uh, make sure they were firmly into the channel uh, which goes around uh, the inside of this frame. And I didn't want to ruin the integrity of this corner. So I, I made up some blocks like this, very simply, and the process is extremely simple to do. You can then use a clamp at a corner like this to draw something like that in. And all you do is you drill a hole, you then do a, a 45 degree cut down from both sides down into the hole and hey presto, you've got a block. And if you do this on the capex, you end up with a perfect right angle between these two faces here. And there's one other thing I'd like to show. These are the sort of regular size uh, versions. You can, if need be, make up uh, large ones. I made up this large one for a particular big bit of framing I was doing a little while ago. Uh, and I wanted to use one of my huge long clamps on it. So you can make them in different sizes. Now, this is the MW1000, and uh, one of the criticisms people have made about it is it wobbles a lot. Well, I was doing this planing with the, uh, the unit uh, up against a solid object, and it allows me to use the clamping options, as you see here, uh, and I've been able to plane up this piece of wood. Now, the purpose of this uh, segment of the video is to talk about face side and face edge. I'm trying to prepare a piece of wood so it's square all round. And the way to do that is to start from a known good surface. And in my case, I'm assuming it is this surface here. And so I'm going to put a mark on there, and that's just a simple pencil mark, and it can be any mark you like. Some people put a mark that uh, also shows the direction of the grain of the wood. Some people put a squiggle, as I do. It just doesn't matter. Whatever you fancy doing, put a mark, and that now is your uh, face side. And you designate this as your face side because you've checked that it's flat and straight. Next, we need to designate it face edge, and that's what I'm working on right now. In order to do that, using my face side as a reference, I'll take a square and I will check to see whether my planing action is spot on. <laughs> it is by pure chance. Uh, I didn't uh, check it before I started making this little snippet of video. It is absolutely spot on. But if not, you, you go back, you keep planing until it's spot on. So that now, is perfectly okay, so I'm going to mark that. Uh, and again, mark it with a squiggle, uh, with a whatever suits you. So now we've got a known uh, good face, a known good edge. That means now we can take this piece of wood and we can... <laughs> we can cut it uh, to width. And notice I used my face edge as the reference there. So now I'm guaranteed I've got two parallel edges. And using again that face edge, I can now cut nice square ends on my piece of wood. And if this was a bigger piece of wood, I could put it through my thicknesser. And uh, with uh, this piece running on the bottom, uh, I can then trim off uh, this side to make sure that's absolutely parallel to that reference face. And that way we end up with a piece of wood 
which is square all round. And it may be that one of these ends you want to mark as a, a face end. Uh, and so you could put a squiggle on there if it was important. Now, path hats are really easy to make, uh, but I had a question from Bill Fleming uh, about the longer ones. But just let me uh, mention the ordinary ones first. Uh, I produced these in the days when we only had the uh, Veritas uh, tall uh, path dog. Uh, and this is the one with the 25mm diameter boss there. So I had to, first of all, drill a 25mm uh, recess in my block of wood and I then continued that through at a diameter of 20 millimeters which then allows that to fit in uh, and I made the original one so that that was flush roughly uh, on top and these would just fit down into the MFT3 and you might use them as pairs uh, for whatever purpose. Um, you can have a variation on these using the Path Super Dogs uh, and you can make up a block of wood uh, that fits on like so to have the same effect. Uh, it needn't be as tall as that. could just be a, uh, a smaller piece like this if necessary. Uh, or uh, it could be uh, the full height of the uh, super dog, whatever you require. Now, in order to make the long one, which is what Bill's asked about, uh, you start with a piece of wood which is straight. Uh, and then using a path stick, now this is one of the original path sticks uh, from the original system, uh, or you can use one of the uh, path sticks from the Mark II system, it doesn't matter. And uh, you clamp this in place uh, on your piece of wood that you're going to use, and then produce your uh, holes wherever you require. And for simplicity, what I uh, do is to just drill down here with the 3mm drill, wherever it is that you want the holes. And then I then took this to the drill press uh, to do the rest of the work. And in this case, again, this was produced for the original Veritas Path Dogs. I did a 25 millimeter uh, 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 bore, first of all, uh, to a depth of about 11 millimeters. And then I took that through with, at 20 millimeters uh, to create the hole. But if you're using the Super Dogs, then you only need to drill a 20 millimeter hole all the way through. And that then allows you to uh, put in a pair of, in this case, these are the Veritas dogs, in there like so, and uh, put it wherever it is on your bench top. Uh, because the tolerances are tight, of course, you've got to uh, get it lined up nicely. And now you've got a nice uh, long surface in order to push against. Or you could make another one of these uh, which went this way uh, and you might have the ability to have a, a right angle uh, piece on your bench for glue up purposes or whatever or jig work. Now I've been asked a number of times about how you go about to produce some offset holes on an MF3 top or whatever it is uh, that's already been created and there are no more three millimeter holes left. Uh, and this was first asked by um, Matthias uh, van Silicon, and uh, Matthias, I hope I pronounced your name properly, um, and more recently by uh, Gus Meredith. Now, Gus has suggested a particular method, and his idea is that you use the 20 millimeter guide block and a pair of the locator dogs to hold that guide block in place using the 20 millimeter holes that are below there. And then if you look at where these uh, three millimeter holes are in the guide block, they are actually one, two, three lots of 96 apart. If you then use two of the original path sticks and you then generate four units here and five units there, you then end up with your three, four, five triangle. And his idea is that you can then use uh, this path stick and you drill through these three millimeter holes to create a line of new three millimeter holes. And you could do the same anywhere else. There is a slight drawback and uh, I, I'm not really criticizing Gus's idea. It's just a limitation of the equipment. And that is, as you can see, this pin is just going through uh, the two rulers here and it can't go into the bench top. And so, uh, there is, I'm afraid, a, a little bit of movement there. Now, if you've got the, the new system, the Mark II system, I think there is a way of 
perhaps improving upon this a little. But uh, in this case, there is a risk, and I'll explain where the risk exists. For this, we're using the Mark II rulers, which have got the 6mm holes in, and obviously the uh, Mark II pins. Now, my idea was that you would put uh, one of the Mark II rulers over one of these 3mm holes in the guide block, and then put the pin through. But of course, the pin can't go all the way through because the table underneath has not been drilled. So what do we do? And this is the risk. You could take the 3mm drill guide, which has got the, uh, the boss here, and that fits now into the recess on the Mark II 20mm guide block. And then you drill through it. And the risk is that in drilling, you could damage the integrity uh, of these holes here. But if you're only doing it once, then perhaps it's worth the risk. But I do not recommend that you do this because it's not something that, if you damage this block, you could then claim uh, back anything under warranty from Axminster. So I've, that hole doesn't need to go all the way through. It just needs to be deep enough so that these pins can go through. So there's one hole there, and we're going to have one here. So I did that very carefully. I do not intend doing this again with this block because I think that there is a risk that it can be damaged. Right. So we now have the ability to put this path stick here, with that going all the way through, and that's now firmly located. Similarly, this path stick can go through here. And that now is firmly located. Now I need to now do my three, four, five triangle. And we've got, we know we've got one, two, three units here. So we want four this way, one, two, three, four, and five the other way. So our intersection is going to be here. We've got, now got a choice of methods. With the, uh, the Mark II system, you get two of these three millimeter guide blocks, and one of them's got a, a rather uh, larger boss there, uh, which can go through two path sticks. So you could put it through two path sticks and then drill. Well, uh, I think that seems like a, a reasonable idea. Right, so I've now got that to go through both rulers. And now look, just see how rigid that is compared to the other method. I can't really move that at all. Now, my thought when I originally started to do this was that we would then uh, have the three millimeter drill going through here and through this. So I've now got the uh, the three millimetre drill goes through here, through my block of wood, and it's now touching the surface of the table. Uh, and meanwhile, my path sticks are really well held in place. And that's not quite gone all the way through, but it's probably enough now uh, to suit uh, the needs of what we're doing. So I'm going to leave that double guide there. And I'm now going to move this to a new position just here. And I'm going to use the single guide to drill a hole there. Now, as an alternative to using this, one could use the, uh, the little joining piece that comes with the Mark II kit. Anyway, I've now succeeded in creating a hole here, a hole there, and here is a hole as well. Now, these holes do not go all the way through at this point, but they're not far from it. Now the next stage is to say, well, I've got to get this hole all the way through. Well, let's use the 
the drill guide to help us. You choose any hole in the bath stick. Locate that over there. Make sure this goes into that hole. And now we've got the, uh, the drill guide keeping the drill upright. And that's all the way through. Again, any hole for here. That's all the way through. And then any hole to take it through here. And so there we have it. Ignore that hole there. I don't know if that was left over from something else. Uh, so I've now managed to create some holes which are uh, correctly spaced. And I'll put this in here now. And I hope you can now see that I've put those pins in properly uh, and that uh, plastic now is held really, really well. It means now I could drill uh, the rest of these holes. And that's given us an offset in this direction of 48 millimeters. And we could do the same that way. So one could end up uh, making quite a reasonable effort at some offset holes from a table which has the holes already drilled, provided you've got the Mark II system. But of course, if you've got the Mark II system, you could have had offset holes drilled properly at the three millimeter hole stage had you done your planning. Now at this stage, I was gonna deal with the Path Guide system offset holes completely within uh, this workshop notes video. Uh, but actually I didn't want this workshop notes video to run into uh, such a huge length of time. Uh, and I do want to concentrate on that. So I'm now going to produce a separate video showing offset holes made at the very beginning as you're laying out the three millimeter hole pattern using the Mark II path guide system. So that will be a separate video which will follow this one. Many thanks for watching. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>